Consett Ironworks, County Durham, situated in one of the loveliest counties in England, a land so rich in coal and iron-bearing earth, they once called it the Black Indies. The British Steel Corporation's plant at Consett, visible for miles around, dominates the skyline like a city set on a hill. The town itself, which stands about 15 miles northwest of Durham City, is a true steelmaker's town with its own memorials to their skill. To the people of Consett, their town is a closely knit community gathered around the highest steelworks in Britain. Its civic center combines the best of old and new, the past and the present. Consett has a special way of life all its own. From the peace of its parks to sailing on the nearby Derwent Reservoir. In contrast, the bustle and excitement of the Works Cup final. Market day in the town square. By tradition, a place where old steel men exchange memories. Meanwhile, the next generation of engineers is already being trained at Concert Technical College. Or the company's own training centre, one of the best equipped in the steel industry. Just now, the young people look on, but in a short time, the more advanced will be operating themselves, many like their fathers before them. The whole area is steeped in steelmaking history. Before steam power was developed, the first steelmakers in the county, a colony of German sword makers, lived at Shotley Bridge, not far from Concert. The village still remembers their ancient craft. They liked the softness of the local water. Here on the banks of the Derwent, on these very stones, they made hollow ground swords, tempering them in the bubbling waters of the stream they were never able to leave. Even before the Roman occupation of Britain, furnaces on the moors in the north smelted the clay ironstone of Durham. They concealed a wealth of mineral treasures that were the prizes of victory for the conquering Romans. Sometimes, too, by an accident of temperature, the native bowl furnaces produced small quantities of a strange new metal, the first pourings of Durham steel. To fight off the fierce northern tribes across the wall, the Romans needed ferrum, iron, the spears and the blades of the short Roman sword, the gladius. But with the fall of the Roman Empire, most of the iron deposits of Durham were still untouched. Iron furnaces stayed on the moors after the Romans had gone. Although the Catalan hearth had been invented, iron's greatest days were still to come. By the Middle Ages, the first blast furnaces started to appear, foundries and forges too. In the northeast, Newcastle armourers used medieval charcoal furnaces for making swords for the Percys. Steel came later, from industrial hamlets like Abbeydale in Yorkshire. A humble Doncaster clockmaker, Benjamin Huntsman, showed the way. In the 18th century, his crucible steel process was an economic means of converting cemented bar iron into cast steel. Bars of blister steel were broken into small pieces and placed in crucibles of fire clay. After a few hours, the crucible would be removed by means of heavy tongs. And the molten contents, blazing and spurting, were poured into a cast iron mold previously prepared. For more than a century, Huntsman's cast steel was almost the only large-scale steel process. One by one, the old charcoal furnaces were left to decay and die. Iron was now being smelted successfully by coke, the new and plentiful blast furnace fuel, and Durham, it was found, had the hardest and brightest coking coal in Europe. Today, trees overgrow furnaces that once lived by trees themselves. From following the forests, the iron industry began to converge on the coal fields. Coke made more iron faster. Then, in 1856, Henry Bessemer discovered that carbon and some other impurities could be removed from liquid iron to make steel 
by passing a jet of cold air into a converter, the first pneumatic process. From something precious and scarce, steel suddenly became an everyday material, a boon to industry. A few years later, another bulk steel making process was introduced, the open hearth furnace. The industrial revolution had started in earnest. Iron and steel were in demand by railroad builders and shipbuilders all over the world. Back in Victorian times, Concert Iron Company was supplying rails for railway tracks in the boom years of the steam locomotive. The age of steam was founded in Durham. It blossomed with the Stevensons, a great family of engineers. On a September day in 1825, the Stockton to Darlington line was officially opened. The moment Stevenson's rocket overtook the stagecoach, the era of mechanized transport had begun. It was the same in America, where Concert Iron Rails were helping to build the first transcontinental line and conquer the vast spaces. At Promontory Point, Utah, on May the 10th, 1869, the Union Pacific and Central Pacific train gangs met. Gold and silver spikes were driven into the last tie. As the land routes changed, so the sea routes of the world were soon to be served by new ships. Timber hulls disappeared from the building berths as the old techniques of wooden ship construction were translated into iron. Steam-driven iron ships were the cathedrals of the industrial age. Before the turn of the century, Concert was supplying northeast shipyards with iron and steel plates. For more than a century, Concert has been in the vanguard of industrial progress, through the age of iron to the modern age of steel. Always its aim has been to produce new and better grades of iron and steel to meet the increasing range of technical standards and specifications and the shifting economic demands. Today, Concert is one of the most versatile steelmakers in the country, with the whole world for its market. Like other manufacturing centers, it's keeping pace with the new techniques that are penetrating every aspect of steel production. In the modern steel industry, one of the most important developments is oxygen steel making by the LD and Caldo methods. Concert was the first company in the world to install both systems side by side in one plant. Installation began in 1962 when Concert was producing about 20,000 tons of steel a week. By June 1964, when continuous production started in the new oxygen plant, the anticipated output was an average of 100 tons of steel an hour. One reason for the foundation of Concert Iron Works last century was the rich ore deposits in the surrounding hills. But as the Durham and Cleveland deposits ran out, supplies of foreign ores were imported through the port of Tyne. Today, all Concert steel is produced from foreign ores, mainly Canadian, South American, Swedish and West African. From the hoppers, the ore is carried by conveyor to elevated storage bunkers. The entire ore train is loaded in a few seconds, automatically and simultaneously. The route from Tyne Dock to Concert in northwest Durham covers a distance of about 23 miles, gantry to gantry. At present, 7,000 tons of ore are hauled inland to Concert daily in specially designed rail wagons. The situation of concert means that everything comes and goes by road and rail. The average load per train is approximately 500 tons, according to type and bulk density. discharge in about 10 seconds is followed by an immediate turnaround back again to time dock. Distributor bridges carry the ore to stock. 
the plant at Concert can handle two million tons of ore a year. From the stockyard, some of the ore is screened and the fine portion sintered. After processing, the ore, sinter, pellets and fluxes go into the furnaces to make iron. The burden, as it's called, is loaded into scale cars. All the materials are transferred to a crane-operated bucket, the furnace skip, according to a set pattern. The conventional chemical change from ore to metal is already well known, but today, by bringing them together in new ways through technological development, scientists and steelmakers can produce modern steel cheaper and faster. Tapping out, no other industry can match the spectacle of a river of molten iron flowing from a newly tapped blast furnace. When the tap hole is sealed, the cycle of iron production can begin all over again. At Concert, a link between iron making and steel making is the ladle train. This iron is destined for the nearby LD steel making plant. Another link to provide the additional iron needed to secure full output from Concert Oxygen Steel Plant takes molten iron from Teesside and transfers it by three torpedo cars on a 63-mile journey to Concert Iron Works, the first time that hot metal has been carried such a distance over rail track in the United Kingdom. The timing and scheduling is arranged to suit both train movements and blast furnace tapping times. Each torpedo car carries a maximum of 100 tons of hot metal. Ultimately, it's proposed to operate a twice daily service of three car trains, seven days a week, on a 12 hour. Iron now on its way to become steel by the LD process. The temperature of the hot metal is about 1300 degrees centigrade. In addition to iron, the charge will consist of metal scrap and lime. It's essential that the lime should be of the highest quality to make a good slag to contain the impurities from the iron. the scrap is added. An average open half furnace turns out about 200 tons of steel in an eight-hour shift. The LD vessel can produce 120 tons of steel every 45 minutes, according to the quality required. After charging, the vessel returns to the upright blowing position. The heavy tongs and hammers of old are replaced by switches and dials. In oxygen steel making, the idea is to inject oxygen into the metal from above and by means of a water-cooled lance. The process is fast and automated. From the weight of hot metal and scrap, the furnaceman can calculate the amounts of lime and other additions required to produce special steel of any specific grade. For example, at the touch of a button, some more lime is added during the blow. Ignition burns the excess carbon. Other impurities, like sulfur, silicon, and phosphorus, are removed by oxidation and contained in the slag. The first steel was made centuries ago by wood and wind and water power. Then it was steel from coal. Today, it's steel from a jet of oxygen blown at supersonic speed. Inside the vessel, the metal becomes wildly turbulent as carbon is burned out. In spite of the smoke and fumes, the outside atmosphere is protected by dust collectors incorporated in the LD plant design. 
Only clean steam is allowed to pass from a chimney. The rate of oxygen input determines the refining time. The lance itself is a steel tube with a copper tip and three orifices. The experienced crew can tell by the colour of the fumes and luminosity of the flame when the steel is nearly ready to tap out. Today, technical skill is confined to predicting the exact composition of the steel. Every second downtime means loss of valuable output. Checking a sample is a job for spectrographic analysis. Sometimes, the analysis indicates a continuation of the blow is necessary. Then, finally, the order comes to tap. The whole range of carbon and special steels is made available by using the LD method. In this case, in just 24 minutes blowing time, iron and some scrap have been converted into a high temperature special steel, a surging white hot liquid flowing into the teeming ladle. Some coal can be added to the yield to produce other special grades of steel. Now the ladle moves to the teeming bay, where the moulds for the ingots are ready and waiting. Giant ladles pour the steel into one mould after another. Perfect ingots mean perfect end products, avoiding waste of precious materials and hold-ups in schedules. Quality control at every stage in steel production is essential. solidify, they are moved to the stripping bay. There the moulds are stripped, leaving glowing red ingots. After stripping, the ingots are converted into slabs and blooms in the primary mill before arriving here at the plate mill soaking pit. Now the heaters, as the men are called, take over. They handle the steel mass by means of a 25-ton overhead charger. Concert Iron Works today is no longer a single industry, but many in one. For instance, it produces both silica and basic refractories and has recently pioneered the use of dense silica for coke oven construction. Later, at the rolling temperature, a reheated slab is withdrawn from the soaking pits and transferred to the rolling mill conveyor. Smaller slabs enter the plate mill reheat furnace and once again are raised to the right heat for rolling. Concert steel can vary from plate steel for shipbuilding to high carbon steel for wire drawing or nickel steel for low temperature pressure vessels. The pulpit operator controls the mill, operating door gear, pushers and conveyor movements. The assistance of closed circuit television enables him to see the discharge side of the furnace. The discharge rolls prepare the slab for rolling. Its first journey is to the descaler, where jets of water and chains remove most of the scale. Then it passes to the four high stand. Now it will be squeezed back and forth between heavy rollers to reduce it to shape.
This is steel, the backbone of civilization, the raw material for the industries which still make Northeast England famous throughout the world. Concert slabs are rolled into blooms, billets, and plates. Many billets are further rolled into even thinner sections and strip at the corporation's jarrow mill. A continuous steel strip shoots out of the rollers. From it will be pressed many automobile and other components. Roller men guide it into the coilers, where the strip is wrapped into great rolls. steel to make car wheel rims, door locks, window catchers, and bumper bars. Back in the plate mill, work goes on in the cooling banks. Plates are marked up for the cross-cut shears. Steel for storage tanks, generators, turbine casings, mining equipment, farm implements. A beam of light is projected onto the plate to ensure accurate positioning before cutting. Today, steel isn't simply a metal, it's a whole calendar of metals, but the demand is still worldwide. for the jobs in hand, and there are many of them. Shipbuilding, perhaps. High-proof stress steel plate. Concert stands almost on the doorstep of Tyneside Yards, which turn its products into ships. All the technical resources of the British Steel Corporation are available to make steels with special characteristics. The steel maker at Concert is a specialist. Special low alloy steels are in demand for submarine hulls. Today, steel is essential for the needs of mankind. It's all around us, built into the fabric of our existence. Concert is continuously engaged in the endeavor to extend fields of steel application through metallurgical research and analysis. Steel, a material to withstand stress and high and low temperatures. Steel for cars. Steel for the vast projects of the structural engineer in industrial building. Even at Concert, they add applied science to the art of steel making in the LD oxygen process. Now, in addition to two 120 ton vessels, Concert's capacity has been still further increased by the installation of an even larger LD vessel capable of producing 160 tons of steel every hour. Above the town, a crimson glow lights the evening skies, a signal that Concert Steel is helping to create a better, safer environment for us to live in.